All right, all right, all right. Dialysis is not your life, nation. Uh, Second Chance family, listen, we're back. Uh, this right here is Dialysis is not your life presents on your mark, reset, go. Uh, this is a new podcast, a new show that we talk about uh, the the distraction, the impact, and the mental distress of dialysis, not just on the patient but on the family as well. And so I, first of all, I want to say thank you uh, to uh, Candace Cathcart being on therapy uh, therapist uh, last week. We want to thank her for coming on and really talk about uh, the mental and why, why we need to, as, as patients, as dealing with kidney disease uh, uh, and, and families that we need to come together. We need to talk. We need to get the therapy to be in the mind. Uh, we talked about so many things. So I ask if you could subscribe to uh, uh, the the Dallas is not your life channel and uh, go to that Dallas is not your life YouTube and you can watch that. It's going to be awesome uh, before we start. So we're talking about, again, uh, the mental distresses of dialysis on the family. And those of you who do not know, uh, I was on dialysis for uh, three years. I did the peritoneal and I did the hemo. Uh, and so with that, you know, think about all the things that I had to go through. And so one day I, I had to go to the hospital because uh, being on peritoneal, uh, the the bag didn't drain. And so the, the cycle, I had two, two actually uh, two, two runs inside of me at the same time. And so uh, after the whole process was over, the doctor said to me a couple of days later, Fred, you, you really had us scared. You know, I'm glad you're doing good. Everything is great with you. And so you need to keep doing. But no one said anything about my wife. She was right there in the middle of the night. Uh, my son at this time, he was like 10 years old and had to find he stayed with his uh, uh, excuse me, stayed with his grandma. And so with that, all those different things that happened. So but no one asked. Uh, is he okay? No one said, was she okay? So that's the reason why I said, I got to do something more than just looking for the patient, but there's something that's out there, the mental distresses of dialysis on the family as well. And so today I have my family here with me. I have my wife and I have my son uh, with me today. And, and we're going to talk, discuss about uh, the, the disparities. We're going to talk about uh, issues and how to overcome uh, when it comes to the family. And so uh, right now I'm going to introduce everyone to my, my wife. Her name is Phyllis Hill. I call her baby doll. I call her baby doll. She's my wife and uh, she took care of me the whole time. And so baby doll, even you know, uh, uh, I want to say to you and to Haven before we go, listen, thank you so much. I'm, I'm not going to cry. Thank you so much for taking care of me when I was on dialysis and uh, being there for me as a caregiver, being there for uplift me. Uh, um, I mean, it was really hard uh, uh, coming from a place of who I am to feel like I was absolutely nothing. All of your uh, my confidence and those different things were gone. We're going to talk about that. But I just want to say thank you for being there for me. Uh, all right. This is my wife, Phyllis. I call her baby doll. She was my caregiver. Baby doll, will you, I just want to introduce you to the people. Will you uh, tell everyone a little bit about yourself? Well, I am Phyllis Hill, um, Fred's wife, Haven's mom. Um, I am, uh, I work in the accounting. Um, what hobbies, you, any hobbies that you like to do? <laughs> Can we go talk about that? We're going to talk about some stuff, things that you like to do, anything you like to do. I know this is off, off I like break. to do hair, um, reading. Uh, that's about it. Okay. okay. How long? How long we been married? Thirty years. Thirty years. Yeah. Wow. Long I'm gonna time. clap my hands on that. Thirty long years. She's been putting up with me for thirty a long years. Time. Yeah, I love you. Uh, also, yeah. I'm sorry. I need to cut y'all cut. Okay. Um. Also, I want to introduce my son, Haven Hill. This is this is my my ace, my 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 ace. This is my high card. 
uh, uh, this is my son, Haven, uh, 22 years old and everything. He's doing great things in college. Listen, I'm not going to so tell everybody about yourself before we get, get started. Um, well, I'm 22. I go to Clemson. I'll be a senior next year. Um, I like to draw. My major is graphic comm. So that's about it, really, you know. Okay. Okay. Well, we gotta. I'm. I'm gonna jump in and 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 ask some questions because again, we're talking about the mental, uh, the stress of dialysis, the impact. We're talking about that of dialysis and and how it affects more than just the family. So, uh, everybody that knew, do know my story. So for me, uh, but let's talk to the the spouse. So I'm gonna ask a question. I guess, baby doll, I will start with you. Um, I want you to talk about the day when we were at Dr. Murdoch's. Uh, and he said, okay, this is it. You got to make a decision today. Um, you got to do it. You got to go on dialysis. He talked about how bad my numbers were. And, um, and I've never asked you this question, but um, can you tell me what was going on in your mind? Um, and how did you feel? What was going on with you at that moment? Um, you can talk mentally, whatever. I mean, floor is yours. Is it? Um, at that moment, we were in, his doc in the doctor's office and um, we knew that Fred had polycystic kidney disease, but at this time it had his numbers had gotten bad. And so Dr. Murdoch was like, okay, you got to make a choice. And so for me, I didn't know what Dallas looked like. I didn't know um, what all it would entail. I didn't know um, actually what it was. You know, I had a, um, a couple of family members um, on dialysis, but I've never seen it up close. And so just knowing that his numbers were um, as bad as they were at that time, that was scary. That was very scary. Um, that was one, it was like twice that I, that death crossed my mind actually thought you, you know, okay, is this it? Is this, you know, that, that was one of the times when, when he initially told us that, okay, you got to make a decision. The, the, the whole thing with Fred that it, it just, I don't want to say the weird thing. I thank God for this, even though your numbers were so bad. Even the nurse was like, the nurse said, um, and she used this phrase. She said, um, you're sick as not. You know, you remember when she said that? She said, that? I am. She she said, said you, you are, are sick as not. not. He according should be numbers. in the yeah, uh, yeah, Yes, according to his numbers. Yes. He should be in the hospital. His his organs should be shutting down. Brain and damage. so, yeah. And so that floored me when she said that. That caused even more fear. But at the same time, I'm just praying, okay, God, what is going on? You know, what, what is going to happen? So that was my initial, it was the fear yeah. because I didn't know, like I said, I didn't know what dialysis looked like. Yeah. I didn't know what it was, you know, I didn't know anything about dialysis because yeah. I've never seen it up close. Yeah. And so just to know that his levels were that bad. That was scary. Well, let me ask this because I'm gonna mm -hmm. ask Haven based the same thing. So mm -hmm. at that at that moment, um, did you feel hopeless? Did you did you feel like you know, because you your your character is fix it. Uh your character is okay, let me jump in, let me make this happen, mm -hmm. let me let me whether it's dealing with money, uh with Haven, uh uh, I mean you you keep the house running. And so when you looking looking at that, when that was said to you, what was it? how in your mind okay i'm gonna fix this or i can't fix this or or what what was running in your mind it, not it wasn't that i didn't think of how i could <laughs> fix it i was thinking of way what can i do before you you know you had to go on dialysis yeah i was thinking of things like that because i knew that the dialysis part that was gonna happen that had to happen so i was more or less trying to figure out, okay, so what do we, you know, what do I need to do at the house? What do, you know, what is, what are we going to do? Just things like that, trying to get my mind wrapped around how things were going to be right. and what I needed to do. I didn't feel hopeless or anything. Like I said, I was scared. I, I was scared that initial, you know, initial time. I was scared until I saw, you know, how you were doing after they got your numbers going and, you know, and got the kinks out, yeah. if you would with the peritoneal, you know, being able to flow. Cause like we, you spoke about how we had to go to the hospital that night when, you know, you had, it wasn't draining, right. you weren't draining. 
But um, no, I didn't feel hopeless. I didn't feel hopeless. My whole mindset, because even um, after he said we had to make a um, choice, I purchased Steeler tickets. Yeah. Because I said, okay, because we had never been to a Steeler home game. And so my whole thing was, okay, I got to get him to a home game. I got to get him to a home game. So I bought the tickets and and all three of us got in the car. And this was for Christmas because we had to, he had to make a decision in that following January. So he wow. gave, he let, he allowed us to, you know, he said, I'm a, uh, because, you know, Fred wasn't showing the symptoms, although his body was, you know, his levels were bad. He said, okay, after the holidays. So for the holiday, for Christmas, I bought the tickets and we rented a car. And I drove all the way to Pittsburgh to get into a game. So. I, I want to do a quick pause for those who are watching uh, and Haven, I'm coming right to you because one thing that she did say, and you didn't know my story, um, my numbers were really bad. Creatine, my creatinine numbers, my BUN numbers, GFR numbers, everything. My, uh, uh, my kidney function, basically everything was horrible, but I had no symptoms. I didn't have, I wasn't, I wasn't swollen anywhere when you know my thing was i was looked tired but i blamed it on the job i was working and so but one thing i do want to say to everyone out there because i've talked to different people as i counsel different people um uh, uh that's dealing with dialysis and kidney disease and they're like you know for afraid i don't i'm not having no symptoms any of those things Listen, you still got to make sure you're talking to the doctors and yeah. checking those numbers um, because it's it's about the tox your body being toxic. Right. So um, because it, it's I want to talk about that real quick. I'm gonna flip and come back to talking. But if if that's you, make sure you're talking to find out what your numbers are. Uh, and I just find out what your numbers are uh, because I, I, my sister passed away. She didn't she didn't want to do dialysis. But her numbers were my numbers were I don't know if this as high as hers, but her body went into septic shock and she died. And so that in and, and, and with that, her symptoms was she felt like she had the flu when she went into the hospital. So my words to you, make sure that you're on top of your health, make sure you're on top of your body, even though you might not feel like it. Listen to your nephrologist. All right. OK, let me let me ask Haven the same question. I know Haven, you 22 now. Uh, and when this happened, this you was 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 ten, I believe, ten years old. So um, I'm, I'm gonna ask this question to you because we hid this from you for a while, whether you knew it or not. We didn't just come out and start saying, "Hey, Dad is going on dialysis." And but when it came to that point when we had to make the decision, y'all, excuse me, I'm getting full right. I'm getting full right now. I'm sorry. Um, when we when we I had the we had to come and we had the the meeting we had to um, talk to you, and um, I remember when I I was telling you I said well son I had to talk to you, and um, and um, when I I told you well you know hey I'm going on dialysis. And I went through this long list of what we can't do. We can't do this and we can't, we can't play football. We can't play basketball. We can't ride bikes, can't go swimming. All these different things that I was saying uh, to you uh, because of the, the knowledge at that time of what I knew about dialysis. And so um, I want you to tell, talk uh, a little bit those because, you know, you got parents uh, with the, your children with, with have parents who are on dialysis. And sometimes we forget about um what the child is going through because the focus is so on the patient um and so you we forget about the men the mental stresses um that falls on the 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 caregiver of the the spouse whoever the wife for me was baby doll and we forget about this you know the, the, the children um but the the main set like i said for me with that with reset life counseling i i, I just want us to understand that we all go through but haven let me hit this too if you don't mind man can you tell uh, tell your side, your story of when uh, when I came, when we came to you, when we said, "Well, Haven, um, we're going on. I'm going on dialysis. Your daddy going on dialysis. If you could, you know, and I know that's about 12 years ago, man. But if you could uh, talk on, in your own way, what what was going on in your mind? What was happening with you? Um, <clears throat> well, from like my side, like it's like how you said, I was 10, so y'all kept a lot from me. But all of a sudden, it was like y'all brought me into the uh, the the living room and then told me like like I still didn't get what dialysis was, but y'all had to like let me know that that dad was basically sick, and so I didn't know to the like what extent or to what point. But then when you started to name the we couldn't wrestle, we couldn't throw the football, we couldn't 
do this. That's when it started to sink in of like how bad the sickness was. And so at 10, I like I don't know. It's just like, you know, you're running in uh what you call fluid in and out. But when you say all that, I'm thinking like, you know, I'm not gonna have a dad because it's like that's all I do, you know. And so when you tell me like this, that and the third is being taken away, like you know, it, like that was hard to hear out of like nowhere, you know, on a random day. But that's kind of my side. Well, I, I, I know um, one thing that I can say that when we did talk, um, y'all, there was a lot of crying in the house. You know, I mean, oh, for, yeah, for me personally, if you could, it said again. Oh, my father. Yeah, I it said was, uh, it was a lot of crying. A lot of crying. I mean, and 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 the thing about the crime was, um, it was a lot of love. And for me, as going on dialysis, um, a, a lot of things hit my mind because I knew I could not work the job that I was working anymore. I had to quit that job. Um, looking at um, being y'all, y'all got excuse me. This thing is hitting me. So um, being one that has been working, literally working since I was like. 11, 12 started in the peak shed. So, um, uh, Grambling Brothers peak shed. So, I mean, always we work in. And so, at this point, I'm 40 years old and I have never basically been without a job, always working. And so, um, with, with me being that manly figure, uh, uh, making sure money's coming in and making sure trying to show the example to the son man listen we got to make sure that you work and take care of your your children and take care of your spouse and make sure bills are paid and those different things so when it came to that point to where i had to quit when i tell you the mental stress that was going on in my mind to where uh who am i now because if i don't have it with me and if, if you don't have a job then you you don't have an identity uh, when with, with me and, and, and so it, it, it was okay now I don't have a job now my the sickness is taking over everybody in my family that had the same polycystic kidney disease now they're they're dead and I'm on dialysis and I'm feeling like I'm going to die and so the men that that whole thing for me was I was just terrified like I was about to die now the thing is as you those who are listening so Baby doll said when she first heard it, the first thing she thought was, she's going to die. He's going to die. He, is this it? And then thinking of my son when he said, I'm not going to have a dad. And so, Ken, Ken when, when we come to that place to understand, man, that's that's hard. So let me ask a question to you, baby doll. How, how did you function um, as a wife, as a caregiver, as a mother, um, as a professional uh, uh, senior accountant? Uh, how did you, how did, how did you keep it together? Um, basically just, I just had to, it, I just had to do it. I didn't think twice about it. And so for me, it's just being flexible, adjusting. Like you said, my, with my personality, I want to fix things. I want, you know, I want to fix it. I want, you know, want things to be right. And so it, I just had to jump in there and, and a lot out of prayer i can't leave i cannot leave god out a lot a lot of prayer but just focusing because the main concern was on you so and i know that i i had i just had to get it done yeah it wasn't a thing of i just had to get it done i can't now let, let me ask just the same question because this is for uh, other uh, caregivers mm -hmm. that's, that's out there, whether you're a man or a woman, you know, they, they're, this this is what what is going on. So um, seeing because you 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 would you know seeing my stress, seeing how I was, um, and especially in the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, how do I say this? What's the word? Um, did you realize? Let me put this right here. Did you realize that you were stressed? Did you realize that you was had mentally challenged? That was there. Did you realize that hey, um, I'm going through some things too? You know, what did you ever come to a place to say? Well, what about me? You mean with what I'm going? Not in a selfish, not in a selfish way to say I want to live, but who's who? Who got me? Because the thing at that point, I was, I was done because I thought I was gonna die. So you know. Me being the one who uphold you 
as that husband make sure that i got you now you you got we, we always had each other but i'm saying you got me but i ain't got you at this time because i mean i'm i'm broken i don't even know what's going on in my life and i'm thinking i'm gonna die so i mean did you realize that i mean the what about me or the mental the mental stress of what what am i gonna do you know if he's not here what am, did you go through did you go through that no i not the like you said like the being mentally challenged or the mental um distress or mental stress it wasn't to the point of you not being here okay and so i didn't feel like for me i didn't feel like um i'm trying to think of the words you use but i didn't feel like um i was alone or anything like that yes it was i i felt more like i was needed if that makes sense because okay. when you're looking at being able to care for you or being the caregiver i'm needed and so that that gave me a sense of purpose to, for me that gave me you know it, it it that gave me a sense of purpose the fact that i felt needed and i was able to help yes regardless can you know? i ask another question mm -hmm. i noticed i mean did you ever talk to your mom your brother your sisters i mean i'm, I'm never asked, I'm just, you know. initially i i talked it was what because i let them know you know that you were going on dialysis and and about your numbers and they knew about the kidney disease and so initially i did and so with and with my mom those you have to understand my mom but w when i cried it was like you can't cry because poo and fred is poo we call him poo, my nickname or, or they call him poo but um you know you got to be strong for poo you got to be strong for poo that was that was just it so for me it was like okay yes ma'am i got it so and that was it well, Haven, let me ask you this. I'm, I'm going to come back because I got some more questions for you. Um, so you 10 years old at this time and all this is going on. Um, what was going on in your mind dealing with school? Because you still had to go to school. I mean, I'm still taking you to school. You, I mean, so and and because at this time, I mean, I, I'm going to say this to you in front of the world, man. I apologize because I didn't know. I didn't. I didn't. My, my focus was so on me to where um i actually stopped being a dad i stopped being a husband i just it was really a woe is me moment man and so i apologize to both of y'all um i'm just saying i mean because i didn't it was I, I i didn't like me and haven i couldn't do this couldn't do that but the thing is that it didn't that didn't last long that part right that, that I mean, part didn't last long as far as you know what i mean like yeah. it wasn't months and months of that yeah you get what i'm saying yeah but we're gonna talk a little bit more. But Haven, talk to me. Uh, how did you how did you cope in school? Did you did you struggle? Did you have mental? Did you talk to me about school? What was going on? Football and um, when football wasn't going on, uh, friends. Uh, um, talk to me. What was going on with you during that time? Um, <clears throat> with school, it was just uh, it was just harder to focus in class because it's like um, like I'm thinking because like at the end of the day. I feel like if I was like, of course, now 22, I could have like handled it better. But 10, it's like I still don't know exactly what's going on. So I feel like that's what kind of made it worse, because it's like if I did know like, oh, this is what's happening, I could at least know. And then this is the time to focus on school. But I'm in school and I was like, I don't know what my dad going to be like when I get back, because I'm up in the middle of the night and i hear you in the bathroom throwing up like crazy like stuff like that so it's like then i gotta go to school in a few hours and it's like that's still up here but you don't have to like apologize about stuff like that either because it's not your fault like a woe is right. me moment it's just like uh it's just the thing of when it is like i can't complain and as like a guy in general it's like you know the world is you stuff stuff down which which is not good but that's how even at 10 i had to do that like i couldn't say nothing it's just i had to and then go to school and so that's what the hardest thing was because like mom still dealt with having somebody with dialysis too but it was like how she said she had the thing of being needed and you know so she got to be involved in this but with me it was just like you know your dad's sick and it's just 
you know, I just had to keep on going on with life. And so that that's the heavy part with me for going to school. Well, did you feel alone? Did you feel like, I mean, I know we were in the house, but did you feel alone? Did you feel like, you I know, felt, like you said, we didn't break? I felt left. I, I felt alone because like I didn't understand dialysis. So I couldn't help you with the houses. So I couldn't help you with what you were going through. I saw mom helping, but it's like I couldn't do a part. So I just had to watch everything unfold basically like a movie. And it's just I couldn't help. I couldn't say nothing. And then also the thing of I didn't know anybody else who had parents on or had a parent on dialysis. So it's like still you can also talk and be like, hey, I feel this way or this way. But you, when you have no one to compare or communicate to, even if someone is there, you're, you still have a feeling of by yourself as if like I'm the I'm the only one who feels this way. You know what I'm saying? And then, wow. you know, yeah. at that young age, it's yeah. just like it just made everything else hard because I couldn't help myself because I wasn't wise enough to know what was going on mentally. And then I couldn't help physically with you, which made it worse because I felt even because you know how like as a kid, you want to be a big boy, you want to do that. But when I'm seeing I can't even help my dad, I feel even more like wow. like like a, like a child. And so, you know. That you, you gonna say something? I, I think that um, with that being said, Haven, that was one of the reasons why we tried to make it um, to where things didn't change as much for you, you know, like because you were still active in sports right. and, and, you know, and, and right. still active in, 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 you know, being in school sports and just going, we tried to make make it as normal <laughs> as we could for you for that one of you know for that reason right and especially being an only child you right. know i i completely under, understand um the loneliness that you made. and 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 i want to say this uh, another quick break and that's why we're talking about the the mental distress now I'm, I'm gonna say this to um to all of us again if if you don't know i am the founder of dialysis is uh the excuse me of reset reset life counseling and with reset life counseling this is the reason why i'm pushing this it's about counseling uh the mental and coaching as well uh people who have kidney disease um people who are on dialysis and the transplant not just the patient but their, their families as well um because i'm gonna ask this question to you guys in a moment but if you think about you know the the need the need to to be able to say hey my daddy's on dialysis and to get this out because he didn't know anybody else that was on dialysis uh any any other parent to be able to talk and to share where he's coming from uh and even with the, with baby doll to be able to come and say hey i'm hurting or what can i do to to talk or whatever and to and to gain knowledge about dialysis but most of all learn how to live and thrive uh, while you're on, while while the dialysis is still in the house, you can still live, you can live big, you can still go up to your dreams, your energy, all these different things back and understand and never lose a drop of beat on yourself when you understand uh, what what's going on with dialysis and then understand what is your role uh, as a son, as a child, as a caregiver, as a wife, as a husband uh, with dialysis in, in, in here and then understand, listen, let's live live because dialysis is not the end the, the thing is if i didn't go on dialysis then i would have died but dialysis is a second chance at life for you to to, to live i mean I, I mean uh uh i'm a little ahead of myself but you know when i realized that and i saw this beautiful woman and i'm like man what am i doing it's time for me to live you know and hey i'm gonna ask the question to me in a minute but it comes to a place to where you 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 you, you even though you're on dialysis it's not over and so it's 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 a mental distress, but you can overcome it. You can you can do it. You you really can. You really can. So um, check me out on dialysisisnotyourlife.com, and you'll find these books. The Dialysis is Not Your Life, the book in the work, the book available on Amazon.com. I just want you to understand. Check me out and things going on because I'm telling you, uh, uh, life can life can be great for you even while 
you are on dialysis. Now, let me ask this question to you, baby dog, because we were when um, uh, going on dialysis. I had to, I lost my job. I'm gonna be, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be open. And if I'm too open, tell me to be quiet. Um, um, when being on dialysis, I had to quit the job, and so um, uh, it, and I had what the the long term long term kicked in, and that's like um, uh, uh, a little over half of your your pay. Uh, and then short we term. short short term, short -term, short -term first, and no, then I huh? you didn't have long term. Talking about disability? No, I'm talking about when I left 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 the job because okay. it went short term. Then I thought it went long term, and then I ain't have nothing. Right. Right. So we did short term and long term, and then it went to nothing. Nothing was in the house, and so um, to a place to where um, we went. And I I went down and can I get food stamps? Now, this was the sad thing. Went down with food stamps. Now, we didn't have no, no, we food covered. We didn't have food. And, and so, um, and I'm just going to throw this out, you know, even, even during this time uh, uh, with, with my son, uh, food, I mean, clothes. We had money, was money was crazy tight. And we I went to, 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 to get food stamps and got turned down. And so that made it even worse to where, how am I going to feed my son? That was the focus. How am I feed my son? How are we going to pay bills? And so I'm going to ask you this. So with all those things going on, how did, because that still comes from dialysis, how did that affect our marriage? And not only that, think about, you know, even the, the um, mental and personal things in, in life of confidence, with my confidence being gone, understanding bones and weak and feeling like I'm going to die. I, did, did, did you feel like that affected our marriage? In with the no money? No money. That's one. Because I mean, I mean, the divorce I comes mean, from that now. And then you're looking yeah. at um, uh, my self-esteem, um, looking at how I didn't feel attractive no more. Didn't, I mean, think about, you know, even with me, um uh, uh uh my son is on here if he want to argue me but just thinking yeah. about the whole everything about um, yeah i mean of course that has an effect on your marriage it has an effect um it, um sexually it has an effect um mentally um as far as like the, the relationship goes but when you look at like you mentioned about um losing your job and having to go on disability now uh mind you now when he went to um the place, you know, to get, you know, to food request stamps. the food stamps. He had a letter that told them, you know, the date that his disability will start, which was like five months or something like that. Yeah. So, so it, you know, and and at the same time, it was still no with that letter, which was a sad thing. But with me, it was so it wasn't like there was an expectation there. Do you understand what I'm saying? No. There was an expectation as far as like, I knew, you know, checks was going to start back. We just got to okay. get through this okay. season right here. Okay. You know, okay. I understand. Yeah. But if you think, think about those six months, that was hard. Yeah. I mean, yeah, of course, that yeah. was very hard because yeah. we had a son that, that don't like oodles and noodles. He sure <laughs> did. He didn't like oodles and noodles. Out. So let me, let me, let me, let me ask this question. Okay. Because of, um, and Haven, I'm going to start with you because I, you know, me losing my job. And, and I think this is something I'm asking on behalf of the um, patient, uh, someone who's like the breadwinner and the one that's the, um, I'm looking at how you and I, we playing, we going, we doing and all that. And so when that's taken away and I look and thinking the worst of me. So when I look in the mirror, I'm looking at the worst of me. Number one, I'm going to die. Number two, um, um, uh, 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 I, I, I'm not attractive with this thing in, is coming out of my stomach um, and then got to hook up at night. Think about how we, we wasn't going out because I had to hook up at nine o'clock. Yeah, we had, we had to change so, our time. Change our all time. those different things. Yeah. I can't wait to talk. Gonna, and, and so look at those things of how it affects. So Haven, I know how I, I, I saw myself different as uh, less than, but my question is, is because I think all of us need to hear this. Did you see me any different? Did you see me any different when I went on dialysis? I don't know, maybe fragile, or, you know, you know, weak, or, or I, I don't know. I mean, did you see me any different once I, I went mean, on dialysis? I mean, 
I didn't really see you different as like a person or like a father wise. It was just of the physical image of like, I've always seen you in the gym, always seen you working out, always was the bodybuilder, 240 muscle, like, you know what I'm saying? So it's like when it goes to I'm see, seeing you kind of like shrivel up and you got the surgeries in the tubes and you can't really play and throw and you may get hurt if you do this or that. And it's like, it's like um, you still were the same person, like you, you know, still with me, still joking and, and, and all that. But as of the physical, like strong, just like that's the vulnerability that I saw with you, but it didn't really change like the father son relationship mentally, I guess it was just more of like physical things that changed. Okay. I remember um, one of our conversations because you mentioned about not being able to work yeah, and you didn't want Haven. You hope Haven understood the reason why you were not working and right. not just, okay, I'm a lazy dad. And I'm like, Fred, you're sick. You're going on dialysis. But I knew that was one of your mental struggles that you had because we yeah. talked about it. Yeah. You didn't want him to see, see a lazy man. Yeah, a lazy, a lazy yeah. man. Yeah. So that was. Well, let, let me say this to you. I mean, because, uh, and I'm speaking from the mindset of the patient because uh -huh. we, we look so bad on ourselves and we feel so down. We feel so uh, unattractive, but we feel like we're weak. We feel, I mean, all these different things hit us in that moment. So I'm going to ask you this, that, and uh, did, did, was I still attracted? Were you still attracted to me with the tubes in my chest and the tubes in my stomach? Was I still sick? I, I mean, honestly, no, I mean, when I, you, yeah, because the yeah, mindset makes you feel that, you know. Initially, now, initially, I understand your fear. The fear, I mean, the fears that we had initially. But when it got to, like I said, that part to me, it didn't last like months. It wasn't months and months of that. When it got to, because, you know, like, which, like your book says, um, the power to redefine your life while on the Alice is you lived this. Yeah. And so you saw and found a way you started back going to the gym, hurting yeah. yourself. Now yeah. I was frustrated. Yeah. The, our marriage was strained when he hurt himself in, in the gym, lifting too much weights. And Haven came home and said, um, uh, you know, it was more than the little pounds you were supposed to. Yeah. So he don't want to talk about that. I'm going to talk about it. Though, he was hey. lifting more than what he was supposed to. And so the next thing we know, we got to go get cat scans and everything because Fred Hilda went to the gym and trying to be Hercules but he has actually lived this and so when it got to the point to where um he started putting this in action and I'm you know is his book redefining your life while on dialysis going to the gym still exercising but he had to do it in moderation and he had to learn that but his create that yeah you had to create, create that it, and yeah. you had to learn it you had to create it and so getting to that point you were on the gym with no shirt. I mean, excuse me, you were in the, on the gym without a shirt. Your confidence level, you know, was, was up. Why? Because it was something that you learned. It was something that you lived. Yeah. You know, so you had gotten to that point to where, um, like I said, your confidence was not, um, you had gotten your confidence back up. You were in the gym, you were exercising, you were active playing you know with haven doing at every game yelling and fussing and everything else at the football games and throwing no you couldn't throw you know the bombs but like you said you had to modify everything so it's still living right. it's still having that mindset to do and to be and to win while i'm on dialysis like and that was a choice that you had like to make that. and you made that choice yeah. and so when i look at everything yeah it was hard in the beginning it was hard getting you know um getting adjusted to the dialysis it, it was hard you know with having to i remember when you had to go and i know i'm talking now but okay. i remember when uh you spoke about we had to take haven you didn't drain that night and this was like um it was late at that night happened like three times though yeah. yeah but one of the times i had taken a muscle relaxer because i was having back issues and then he didn't drain so we called and, and they said get into the hospital i had just taking the muscle relaxer. I don't know how we made it home because I fell asleep driving. But 
God. just things like right God, but just things Jesus. like that, and and you know taking Haven to mamas and trying to you know let them know everything is going to be all right. But right. just getting past those those initial things, and they they you know they got your levels because at first you were like what you would you were um dialyzing oh, like okay. um, it wasn't like every four hours, and yeah. then they got you on a schedule, and then it was just overnight. overnight and when it was, it was on the machine overnight. You had your days to, you know, your your daytime for it. Yes. You were a, more active. You were able to do more, but you they had to get you to that point. Like the, you had to get to that point. And I think, you know, with that, since you're already there, I want to say something real quick because I got a comment from Tina uh, Woodward. Hey, Tina. Um, that's Hi, Haven's Tina. God, godmother. Um, Hi, Tina. <laughs> you're going to flip to something else. Hold on, let me go here. She said that listening to Haven's comments, here it is, insight from Haven's comments, she says support groups are so important. And so I want to throw that out there to um to all of us. Yeah. I think that's um I want to throw that out there out to, to, so parents, the view and can I say this? Even if it's not dialysis, right, it might be whatever that disease is. That's why, you know, when I wrote the book, is you know, it's, it talks about dialysis is not your life, but the reality is divorce is not your life. Uh, 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 what is it? Bankruptcy is not your life. Losing your job is not whatever that it is that defines your life at that moment. That's not your life. And so that's the whole mindset. Now, uh, I'm, I'm going to say this. Hey, man, do you remember? I'm going to tell y'all when everything flipped. Hey, man, do you remember? Uh, Cause he was, he would always ask dad, can we, can we go outside and throw the ball? And I would say, my answer was, I can't because I'm on the house. Dad, can we ride bike? I can't cause I'm on dialysis. Dad, can we do this? I can't. That was my answer for everything. I can't because I'm on dialysis. So we didn't have the shows like what's on right now. We didn't have all the things that's going on for dialysis patients. And 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 we didn't have none of that. And so uh, one day, Haven, if you remember this, one day Haven came and he was getting ready to ask me a question. And he said, um, never mind. And I said, hold on. What what say? So he said, no, no that's, that's okay. That, that's never mind. Never mind. He said, uh, and so... Uh, he didn't ask me because he knew he was going to get the response of no because I'm on dialysis. But something hit me that night, that day. I was like, oh, my God, I'm missing time with my son. He ain't got no brothers. I mean, no, son. it's just him. And I'm like, I got to do something. At that moment, that time, that's when I realized the only answer that I knew that I've always done was gym. And so with that, that's where I started. I got to go to the gym. And in that, I ended up getting, was it two hernias? Uh, uh, one. One you hernia. Like, okay. One, one, one hernia. Okay. Because, of, you know, with the dialysis, with the, the catheter coming out, that's open. And so I had to learn how to work out through trial and error. But once I found it, I created better health, fitness, and motivation for people who are on dialysis to train you that even though you're on dialysis you can work out you can get it together you can take your shirt off like baby i was saying you ain't got to be flabby the thing is it's not about working and getting bulky it's about movement and so when you're moving it's going to cause you to dialyze better cause you to feel better and so what happened with me when i started exercising started getting i mean everything about me changed my confidence came back right. i mean i was no longer insecure i mean taking my shirt off um, enjoying my wife. I mean, having energy back, sex. I mean, everything came back because you're going and you're enjoying life. And from that point, I went from every every four hours exchanges to once at night. And so with that, that's why I had to create and write the book. That's why I had to do Reset Life Counseling to let you know you can get it back. But hey, but let me go back to you. Do you remember that when that happened? When, when, you, when you asked that question? I, I don't know if you did because I didn't say nothing that time. But that was my wake up call to where I cannot lose my son to dialysis. I can't lose my wife to dialysis. I cannot lose my life living dialysis. No, nah, I can't do that. Do you remember that, son? Um, yes, sir. Cause like it would be a whole lot of stuff that I would still want to do. Cause like, cause like uh there's times where we'll just be talking and joking and then just instantly start fighting and stuff. So it's it's times where I'd have to just like <laughs> sit there and just be like mad at you and let you like get on my nerves and stuff like you know what I'm saying I couldn't like do that like that that stuff but being 10 is still you let those intrusive thoughts out you know what I'm saying and it's like dad can I blah 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 and it's like I don't be thinking and then that one day I just had to like wait like I had to catch myself because I didn't want to make you feel bad but I wasn't trying to be I wasn't trying to be insensitive by just saying 
hey, can uh, can I throw the ball? Can I do this? Can I do because constantly asking you to do stuff that that I know you want to do and I want to do. Like I didn't see it at first, but that's that that was insensitive of me because it's just reminding you of that. And so that's why I kind of had to shut down and stop asking. But that day when you caught on, that's when I was about to ask and I had to, you know. But but one thing I'm gonna say, you're a kid. I mean, and so when right. you're looking at right. them, it's not right. to to your kid. So you're supposed to play. I mean, if you're looking at how life abruptly just stopped for you, I mean, and for for baby doll. And so the 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 thing that I I um that I, I'm grateful for is that um uh, everything that I told you that I couldn't do in the beginning, we did it all. Yeah, exactly. We did it all. I want to tell you that. And so it's about knowing, first of all, understanding your dialysis and then understanding your body and then coming to a place to, to learn your body and then start know, knowing what, what worked for you, what don't, and then getting back into your dreams and your desires. Start living again. We start going on vacations. We start doing cruises. Uh, we, I mean, we, we, we got the, oh, we, start, we started living again. We started living again. And so I just wanted to tell and encourage somebody out there. Number one, that you're not going through your situation by yourself to understand your whole house is going through it. I'm going to go a little deeper. Um, my brothers uh, and my sister, they they were going through. I think my brother came from New Jersey and then my other brother came from North Carolina and my sister and then another brother crossed town. And we didn't tell. Well, I didn't tell nobody. And so this this right here was so much love because I came this. I don't know if it was like the next week I was going to do dialysis, but um, it my, was right before. because yeah, was, My wife had called my family. And so I came I, I come downstairs. I was already connected. So. They got here a little late. So when I came, they came downstairs, they were all here and the love that I, that, that, that was shown. Uh, but again, you know, my brother, I mean, my brothers, Rex, Bug, T, Candy, listen, I love y'all because the thing is you guys went through the same thing, the same hurt, the same pain. I remember they would come over here and it, when it turns nine o'clock, I would go and I would hook up or I bring the little thing down here while we talking. And I got this. I can't wait to talk to my brothers and sisters on this. So I'm sitting here and I'm in this bag and discussing and talking and still laughing or whatever. But I never asked them. So, Rex, if you're watching, Ken, if you're watching, if you're watching, I'm going to bring you guys on the show because I want to know how did you feel seeing your brother holding this thing up? Uh, and running dialysis in your face is still trying to hold and, and and stay the same. I can't wait to talk to you because understand it's the same thing with my wife and my son. I'm standing there with this and however, and, and I don't know. I mean, it's it's just it's just something, y'all. Uh, but my word to you guys, listen, life is not over. I see something from Iris Strobe says that's what got that's what got to me the most was trying to explain to my grandbabies that Nana was tired. And didn't have the energy to to do a lot of things we used to do, and we feel that way. But I want to tell you, you can get your life back. I want to encourage you just to, to if wherever you are, please find me. Dialysis is not your life. Uh, uh, get in contact with me so we can whether it's it's, it's virtual or one on one, so we can start talking, so we can create a plan, so we can get things off your uh, uh, the mind and get your life back. Uh, so you can live. If you don't have the book, get the book, dialysisisnotyourlife.com. It's available on Amazon. Now, let me ask this question before we close. Uh, it's about time to close out. Man, we've been talking a while. Uh, um, I'm going to ask you, baby doll. If counseling was available for you then, how could counseling uh, have helped you? How you feel? How do you feel counseling would have been able to help you when um I was on dialysis and all the stuff that was going on. I think um, I think it would have helped me as far as um, not always feeling like I had to do everything right, or you know, or just being more flexible, being able to um, being able to just be there. Yes. You know, and not just, and like with me, I guess I didn't. What about you? Did, did, I don't want to, did you forget about you while while you was taking care of me for the years? Your likes, your wants to go, 
you know, you got Tina, Tina and Jean, you didn't travel as much. No, you we, going, I'm just saying. So, yeah, and I mean, yeah, things to, in that, on that side of it, yeah. So I think counseling would definitely help keep a balance, you know, at the same time, because I do know that, you know, as a caregiver, it's my, it's, it's also my responsibility to um, help with your health. Right. you know to um so as a caregiver you you know you're responsible for that person so you also because that person is responsible Thank and you. has to do their part right but that caregiver is also responsible so with uh with a um counselor counselor or therapist coach or coach yeah yes that, that it it would have you know definitely been needed to right. help on that end just to keep things balanced just to keep um you know, to show me how to have me time, to show me, you know, that yeah. there are ways to still have, to do the things that I like to do and yeah. not just, you know. Um, Haven, I'm asking the same question. I know you were 10 at the time, but I think with your, you being 22 now and the understanding that you have, um, how do you think counseling and coaching could have helped you um, at that age, knowing you didn't have anybody to talk to or to share? How do you feel that it could have could have helped you? Um, I feel like counseling could have could have helped a good bit at that age. It's just a thing of like even now I don't really do a lot of like counseling, so it's like I can't really tell you exactly how it would help out because I don't I still don't know. But like I feel like at least being able to talk some stuff out, being able to get stuff off my chest would have at least lightened up things. Yeah. yeah. And that, like Haven said, that and that's the main thing is being able to get it out, being able to get things off your chest. That's a way to overcome the stress right. of it all and right. getting it out. And right. like with your workbook and, and it being a, also a journal, yes. you know, it's therapeutic. Yes. So it helps you in, in that area. To get it so, off your mind yeah, to get it off as your you're mind. writing. Yes. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's a, it's a journal in the yeah. back of this too, in the workbook of you on your journey to getting your life back. Right. Um, and so um, I know we're it's, man. I, we're gonna have to do this again because we're not done. But it's, it's, we don't went too long. Let me ask this. So Haven, let me ask this question um, for kids out there because even though you're 22 with the relationship that we have right now, um, if if it didn't happen then and it happened now, as close as we are, um, it would still that mental struggle would still be there even at 22, I believe. So my, my, my question that I want to ask to, well, I want to ask you if you could, if, if in your own words, in your own words, if you had to say something to encourage uh, the child or the children uh, with parents who are on dialysis or parents who are sick uh, to encourage them um, to, to understand that it's, it can be better. It can, it can get better. Uh, uh, just encourage them in your own words, man. Can you, can you share something to them? Um, if I had to say something encouraging, I'd probably say like, stay calm, stay focused. Cause when you first hear it, it's, you know, like or first realize you have a parent going on dialysis is heavy and all that. But it's like, now I'm 22 and I see like, you can get your life back together and you can do this. So at the end of the day, you don't have to lose that parent, not even necessarily to death, but just to dialysis itself. Like how, like how you said, you felt like you you stopped being a father. So, you, you know what I'm saying? It's like, I'd say, just don't worry. I'd say, stay focused on what you're doing now and do get counseling and help. Even, even if it's not therapy, do something to where you can get your feelings and emotions out in some sort of way. Because if you're a kid and you have no one to talk to, you know what I'm saying? At least some type of activity or hobby. And also I'd say, don't just leave the parent and also don't try to treat them necessarily just like a patient. Because if you remember for a while, it stopped being throwing the football and it went to, um, it stopped being dad Q, throw the football with me and it was dad Q, watch me play this video game. And then dad, can you play this video game with me? And it was stuff inside the house. You want to play checkers, you want to play cards, you want to play this, you want to play that. So we still wow. had fun, still played. So that's that would yeah. be my main thing, to not just totally change and 
tiptoe and act like I can't do nothing. If we can't have fun out outside, we have fun, in, you know, inside. And so that would be my, my right. thing to. Well, can I ask you this? Because you said that you got to focus on like something different. So was that the reason why you was running that ball like that when you was uh, when you was playing football that you was running running over people? Was that was that one of the reasons that you was running so hard? <laughs> Like I tell you, did a great job. Let me, uh, well, baby doll, let me say this. One thing I want to share this to you guys, man, real quick. Like, cause we're going to come back and we're going to do a marriage one. I just want to tell you guys right now we're dealing with family, but we're going to do a marriage one. Um, and, and one thing, like baby doll said, my, I had this hook up at night at nine o'clock. And so usually we go, you know, you go out at that time and do those things at the time. And so it was like in the beginning, we wasn't doing anything um, because dialysis had taken over the house. But it came to a place where um, we, we started, excuse me, we started going out during the day. So, you know, even though if, if it wasn't uh, uh, going to the movies, uh, you know, we started early or or um, because the, or I, I connected late. I mean, I would right. connect late. Uh, right. So if it was a play or somewhere we would go and I would come home, we enjoy ourselves and I might hook up at uh, one o'clock in the morning. But I still had to hold on for nine hours. Uh, and so you have to adjust and so i'm saying this to all those married couples who are out there your life is not over still date your wife still date your husband love them encourage them and for communicate yes and one thing we say try and then uh, try and then modify and i i want to say this to us and i mean we're going to talk about this again now i'm gonna say don't lie but you know still still if they if being attracted, baby, I'm still attracted to you. Uh, baby, you still sexy. Um, you still look good. Because when I realized that, hey, hey, I'm I'm still the sexy man. I just got this tube in my gut, you know, and then then taped it up and, and, and came to a place to understand that even though I was on dialysis, I was still worth my weight in gold. I was still fine. I was still sexy. I was still all of that. It's like taking gold and put it in manure or taking gold and dig it and throw it in the ground or whatever you want to do with it. You can cover it with whatever substance, manure, whatever, that gold does not lose value. And with you we, uh, being on dialysis or whatever, that's what you got to understand that, you know, the, that we, we're still who we are. You're still beautiful. You're still sexy. You can still dance. You can still, I mean, all those different things. Now, when you first go on dialysis, you're going to have to build build up to it we'll work on that but you know you'll get to that place to where you can start living your life it might not be you might can't run a, a hundred miles but listen you might have slowed down but however get your life back get your life back and so we're gonna we're gonna talk about marriage we'll come in and we'll bring some other couples on as well so be prepared for that that's coming up real soon and so i want to share that so my question to, to you I mean, excuse me i ask for you is if you could, if you had to share to another spouse, whether it be a husband or wife, caregiver, oh, caregiver. Uh, 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 wife too. I mean, I mean, however, you know, what what would be some words that you would say to encourage them in your own words? Um, to be flexible. To be flexible. Take one day at a time. Um, that it's a change. It is a dialysis is a big change, but at the same time, it, it's not your life. It's not the patient's life. You're your um your loved ones ever don't be afraid to ask doctors um court um, don't be afraid to ask the questions because you won't know if you don't ask wow. you know a lot of uh, and especially with with fred and just learning more things about the polycystic kidney disease how you know you didn't have to wait to go on dialysis before being put on transplant lists and things like that it's just so many things so just ask questions just ask questions know your um loved ones uh body know you know um learn learn about learn, the dialysis yeah, and learn, the numbers learn the whole process the eating and you all. need to learn the whole pro process and just um so that you're able to be effective as a caregiver because my whole thing i was i was nervous you know like when i had to give you the shot <laughs> That's why I needed therapy because I had to start giving him shots. And I can't and, stand needles. And, yeah, and he <laughs> couldn't do it. So the the nurse at that time said, "Jab it in." And so when he said, "Jab it in," 
I jabbed the needle in his oh stomach and God, he screamed. She stabbed me. Oh my gosh. She stabbed me, Candy. Anyway, so that's that's why I need to miss him because of those shots. But at the same time, but seriously, um, yeah, just just one day at a time, communication, ask questions, um, and just be there for each other. I Haven, I overlook anything I say. Um, Because I'm going to come back to that. Haven, um, it's it's time to quit. But I got one question that I wanted to ask you before we hung up. And um, I should have asked earlier, but I want to ask now. Um, Knowing that, you know, I had polycystic kidney disease and knowing that it is hereditary, do you have a fear? Because, I mean, I want to know this personally um, so that I'll know from my side as a father what I'm like. my son so do you have a fear that you may um end up with polycystic kidney disease do you have a fear of that um at first it was like seeing papa jd with it and then seeing you with it and it was like you know hearing about other family members it was not necessarily a because i like like the end of the day i'm i'm 10 so it's like i didn't really understand it all but still it was I say it was becoming a fear. I say that, but like now it's not really because I'm seeing, I'm seeing that you can beat it. You know what I'm saying? And so even if it is hereditary, yeah. now I'm healthier, eating better, exercising, and I'm learning that from you. So even if you aren't on diet dialysis, doing things to prevent kidney failure, so now it's not really a, like a fear. Did you have a fear of that about Haven, knowing that it's hereditary? It, it, initially, I did. I was afraid that could be because it was so dominant in your family. I had that initial fear. And so we did have him tested. And thank God there was none. And so he gets physicals and his, his kidney levels are awesome. So um, I no longer have that fear because he has my genes in him. So. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. all right last thing i want to read this from candace it said this is so good thank you guys for sharing you all are helping so many families by having this conversation i uh, just want to say thank you candy y'all we're, we're done uh if, if there's i didn't see any 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 questions you got in um I don't see any questions. Okay. Well, listen, I want to say thank you to everybody, all those who are on. I know we we did the hour, you know, so we two minutes over. Um, please check us out. We're gonna we're gonna continue to do this. Uh I'll I'll be if you follow me on Facebook, um, Fred Hill, uh, all you can check me out on Dialysis is not your life. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel, share this with somebody, check me out on dialysis is not your life. Uh, dot com. Also, um, check out the book, Dialysis is Not Your Life, and the workbook book on Amazon.com. Check me out at Reset Life Counseling Coaching. I'm here to help you, whether it be virtual or whether it be up close, personal, together. And we, and we, we, we counsel and coach uh, individual uh, 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 groups and also caregivers and the children. And also, we we do the whole family. So bring the husband, the wife, the child. Let's sit down. Let's talk. Let's get our life back. Whatever the questions that you have, let's get let's gain some goals. Let's put some plans into action. Uh, and and actually, it's a five week reset empowerment program. So it's five weeks is what it is. And so um, five weeks that we'll go through. And I promise you, it will change your life. So go to dialysisisnotyourlife.com. Check it out. All right. You guys be blessed until next time. And again, this is my son, Haven Hill. He's uh, in college, Clemson, doing his thing. I Final love you, man. Week. Final Get exam done, week. Haven. Yeah. Thank you, man. <laughs> hey, yes. Yeah. Doing great in school, doing the A's and B's. I'm proud of you, man. I'm proud of you. Proud of you. Keep doing what you're doing. Yes. Yes. And also, again, thank my wife, my beautiful wife. She's so pretty and hair slamming and everything. That's my baby. I love you. Uh, and I appreciate everybody that was watching all the comments. And, and also shout out to Philip uh, uh, Jones, man. Listen, y'all, if you could, those who believe in prayer like I do, his name is Philip Jones Jr. He had a um, he had surgery in his heart and he's still in the hospital. This was at the begin at the end of 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 march and that's my that's he's he's second chance family's done so much he's, he helps out he's an advocate for dialysis as well and so please keep him in prayer 
um, and believing for him and his mother's father, believe on for all of them, believing that God is going to turn it around, praying that I'll have him on the show as well. All right. Share this. Sh share this. Go ahead. I'm sorry. And um, one last thing. Also, uh, Reggie Grice, Reggie and Alicia. Um, Reggie just got his kidney. Yes, so, he sure did. Yeah. Yes, yes. And listen, listen, those of you who are um, what, whatever it is, if you, if you got good news with people on dialysis, things that are happening uh, that they're doing, listen, hit me up. Because we, 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 I just want to bring people in as well to let people know that you can do this even while you're on dialysis. You can get your life back. So if that's you, share. Uh, I'm trying to get in contact with a guy. He's in his 80s and he still farms. He has his own farm. He's just 80 years old and uh, on dialysis. And so uh, if you know him, get him to me. All right. I love you guys. You guys be blessed. And we'll see you guys um, hopefully next Thursday. I'll let you guys know. I think I got something going on next Thursday, but we'll see. Check us out. Ready? On your mark, reset, go. You will see it. You guys be blessed. Bye-bye. Haven, thank you again, man. I love you. Love no you, problem. Man.